Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video, another video in our series of videos uh, dealing with propositional logic, uh, is going to explore De Morgan's laws and in, and in particular De Morgan's two laws. Okay? Uh, but more importantly we're going to uh, show how to prove or how to show logical equivalence, the equivalence of two propositional statements. And we'll use De Morgan's laws in this case uh, as an example. Okay, so what does De Morgan's laws tell us from a propositional perspective? Okay, uh, well let's say the first version. Okay, uh, let's say law one. Okay, uh, says that the negation. Okay, that the negation of a proposition ended with another proposition uh, is equivalent to the negation of the individual propositions. Uh, Ord together. Okay, uh, that's one way we could write it. Okay, in this particular, in this particular, uh, I suppose, let's say, with the, using this particular syntax and these symbols, the exclamation mark means negation or not. Okay, it could be written another way, and in, in it depends on the notation that you're using. Yeah, and it probably looks a little bit more familiar if I said something like this: uh, p ended with q bar so the negation is across the and and so this particular notation here is equivalent to this notation and what de morgan's uh, law says that uh, the negation of p ended with q okay or p ended with q negated the whole thing negated is equivalent to the negation of p or with the negation or with the negation of q Okay, so what we'd like to do is we'd like to prove that the left hand side, that this thing here, that this proposition here is equivalent, equivalent, okay, equivalent uh, to this proposition over here. And the way we're going to do is we're going to do it with two tables. And we're going to build a true table for the left hand side, okay, and we'll prove to uh, build a true table for the right hand side, and we'll show that f under all possible states that the proposition can, can be in. Uh, that the output or the results or the evaluation of the proposition is the same uh, on either side. Okay, and let me let me give you an example. So let's do the true table. Let's do the truth table. The true table for let's say p ended with q. It's negation. Okay. Now we know that the negation is a unary operator, so it can only ever operate on a single proposition. Okay, so in this case here, currently this particular proposition uh, uh, within the negation yeah has a p ended with q. So what we need to do is we need to evaluate the p ended with q first. So let's do that. I'm going to do that through a true table. So there's two inputs to this proposition. There's the p and there's also a q. Okay, so let's build a true table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list the true table. The inputs on the left hand side of the bar p q all the possible truth values that they can be in simultaneously. So they could be false, 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 true, true, false, and true, true. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate what P ended with Q is, which is just the definition of an AND, okay? So P ended with Q, well we know the way an AND works. An AND is only ever true when both of the inputs are simultaneously true. So where are both P and Q simultaneously true? Well, not here, neither there, not there. Here's where they're simultaneously true. So an AND will only ever be true when P along with Q are simultaneously true. Everywhere else they're false, okay? So everywhere else must be false. And that's the definition of the AND, okay? But what we'd like to do now is, now we, what we have is we've evaluated the AND under all possible inputs. And you can see for any input there's only a single there's only a single truth value listed. Okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to negate this particular proposition. Okay? So we're going to negate the proposition okay, by adding in another, another column to our table. So I'm going to calculate what P ended with Q. That's these values here. What the negation of them values are. So I look at the P ended with Q column. Here it is here. Uh, we know the way a negation works. If the value is false, its negation is true. If the proposition is true, its negation is false. So falses go to trues and trues go to falses. So in this case here, this false, the negation of P ended with Q when it's false becomes true. The negation of P ended with Q when it's false becomes true. The negation of P ended with Q when it's false becomes true. And finally, when P ended with Q is true, its negation must be false. Okay. So this is the output for the left hand side of this particular proposition, this equivalent statement here.
So let's do the right hand side. Okay, so let's do the truth table. The truth table. Okay. For the right hand side, which is P bar ordered with Q bar. Okay. That's another way to say it. Okay. Or the negation of P ordered with the negation of Q. So once again, there's only two inputs, there's P's and Q's. So I'm going to build a truth table. Okay, the true table is going to look like this. It's P's and Q's. And all the possible states that can be in is false, 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 true, true, false, true, true. And what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this particular this particular expression. Okay. Now before we can do the OR, okay, we must have a single truth value on the left and a single truth value on the right. Currently we have a proposition P and it's negation. So what we need to do is we need to negate the P's. Yeah. So I need to evaluate what the negated P is. Okay. Well, the negated P is, well, here's the P truth values down here, down the first column. So when it's false, it becomes true. When it's false, it becomes true. When it's true, it becomes false. When it's true, it becomes false. Okay. So now we have single values, single truth values for the negated P. So we need to do the same with the, with the Q. So we need to negate the Q. Okay. So here's the truth values for the Q down here. So false becomes true. True becomes false, false becomes true, and true becomes false. Now we have both inputs, okay, as single values. We have the left operand and the right operand evaluated into a single uh, truth value. So now we can apply the OR. So we need to take the left operand is going to be P and with Q. So it's going to be P bar, the negation of P, which needs to be, sorry, OR with Q, which is uh, Q bar, OR with Q bar. So actually, the inputs to this OR are the inputs down these two columns. Now, we know the way an OR works, we have that little rhyme, an OR is only ever false when both of the inputs are simultaneously false. So the only place that these two inputs are simultaneously false, okay, are here. So the OR is only ever false when both of them are simultaneously false, okay, and there's where we have a false and a false, so it's false here. Everywhere else it must be true. Okay, so now what we've done here is we've evaluated what P bar or with Q bar is. Okay, and what we hopefully can see is this: is that when we look at the left-hand side of this expression here, and when we feed in a false false, what we get back out is we get back out a true value. When we look at the right-hand side, when we feed in a false.